Welcome back to the property pilot. So this is how I increased the value of this property by 45% in less than 12 months. Okay, so welcome back. Today I'll be talking about how I increased the value of this particular property by 45% in less than 12 months. And bear in mind, this property was actually viewed and purchased in the summer of 2021. And for those of you in property in the summer of 2021, you'll know it was absolutely crazy market. Demand was super high, supply was ultra low. And you know, if I can do this in a really crazy market and get such an uplift within 12 months, well, you can certainly do far better than me in today's market as I speak in November 20. 22, there are far more opportunities to make some significant money. So let's get into this property and how I actually did this. And I'm going to give you the tools, the tips and the tricks, and I hope that you can emulate this strategy and get also get similar success. So I found this property on Rightmove. Yep. You know, a traditional portal. For those of you in property in 2021, Rightmove, oh my gosh, <laughs> by the time you'd seen a property and you'd called the agent, it was already gone or all the viewings are already booked, right? It was absolutely impossible to view a property. Never mind buy a property in 2021. So I found a property it was in my target area I knew this area inside out and it was actually listed for a very low price which is something I'm going to come on to very shortly about how the asking price isn't actually the value of the property most of the time so it was listed great and obviously because it was so cheap it got loads of interest so I called up and I was already beaten to it the viewings were booked now I persuaded the agent I was like come on just squeeze me in I'll be the last viewing literally I'm in the area it only needs five minutes you know blah 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 so they got me in they tagged me onto the last one and you know as promised I was there and I just blitzed around with a couple of minutes. Now, this was a Friday afternoon, okay? So I was the last person to view. It was a Friday afternoon. They'd actually listed it on the Thursday. So they listed it on the Thursday. They had viewings on the Friday. So, you know, really quick turnaround. Now, I was the last person to view this property and they'd had viewings, not all afternoon, but in the afternoon. And I don't think, as far as I was aware, any office had been submitted thus far, right? So that's good for me. Now, the person that was actually conducting the viewing of this property wasn't the negotiator. She was just getting access, you know, to the property and, take, and showing people around. So actually the negotiator worked in the office and we had to call her to present the offer and to get something agreed, which is sometimes it has its pros and has its cons. I much like, to, I much prefer to meet the negotiator in person and build that rapport and build that relationship if I don't already know them. So anyway, I got squeezed into this viewing and what I love to do is, and this is one tip I can give you, I had really good success doing this, always put forward an offer on a Friday afternoon because people, you know, they want to have a good weekend. And if they, you know, put yourself in the vendor's shoes, if you can get an okay offer, a nice offer on a Friday afternoon, you know, two, three, four o'clock, you're generally in a better mood, the weekend's coming up and you're more likely to accept that. Whereas, you know, flip it around, let's say it's Monday morning, you know, most people don't like their jobs, they're in a bad mood and they get an offer, you know, maybe it's something they don't like and they'll flat out reject it. So Friday afternoon's a really good time. Um, in fact, I'm recording this at Friday 2.52. I submitted an offer about two o'clock. So <laughs> Friday afternoon is the best possible time to put forward an offer. And obviously you want to get a reply before end of play, right? That's the idea behind it. But I'm getting sidetracked. So um, yeah, I viewed this on the Friday and I called in the office and I put forward an offer straight away. You know, I'm confident on my figures. I've done this a hundred times before. I know how much it's going to cost to turn around. So in fact, what, before I move on, one point to, to talk about here is most property investors like to take time to, to think about things and to make up their mind and, and come to a decision. But put it this way, back in 2021 in the summer, the demand was crazy. So if I would have waited till Monday or Tuesday to put forward an offer, that property would have already been gone. And that's why it was so important that I made sure I was there and I put forward my offer straight away to give myself the best possible chance of this offer being accepted, right? This offer got accepted. Yes, that's right, it's got accepted and I'll come to, the very, to that very shortly. But there's various reasons why my lower offer, I put in an offer lower than asking. And as I've already alluded to before, the, the asking price was certainly much lower than the value of that property well in my opinion so you know how did I actually manage to get a below ask offer accepted on a property where there was high demand you know how did this actually happen well I'll tell you how and this is maybe why there weren't offers on the property thus far before my offer on the property and I was the last person to view it right so a couple of reasons first the property was okay it needed a little TLC nothing major you know slight decoration I'm talking a couple of thousand pounds maximum really maximum but again this doesn't put people off this doesn't put investors off investors love this kind of thing so again there's nothing unique about me 
me, I can't do that cheaper than another investor, right? But all these little things that I'm about to describe add up. So number two, they were sitting tenants and the sitting tenants were paying a really low rent. Now that does scare a lot of investors away because either they're too scared or they don't have the confidence to actually turn this around and renegotiate or even, you know, if they are problematic tenants, they would. But if there is a property with problematic tenants to evict them, again, that's stress, you know, it takes time and it's not everyone's cup of tea. Okay, there's a lot of ways to make money through doing that, but it's not everyone's cup of tea. But the fact that these tenants were paying such a low rent, and I'm talking, they were, they were paying about 60% of the market value of that, what that rent should be. It scared off a lot of investors, right? And again, it, depending on how you're financing that property, sometimes because the rent is so small, if your mortgage payments are you know close to that, the lenders aren't gonna be too happy. So, you know, stress tests your, your potential purchases, stress test them at 145% of the mortgage, and providing your rent's bigger than that, I'm, I'm generalizing, you'll be okay, right? So again, people don't like this. I loved it, and in fact, after inquiring a bit more detail about it, which I don't think other people did, I found out that actually they're interested in moving on. They were a growing family and they were outgrowing the house, right? So, you know, this would be great. I knew I wouldn't have to put up with it for, for much longer, right? So that scared off a lot of people. Now, number three, this is what scared off a lot, again, <laughs> This looked far, far worse than what it actually was. We went up to the second floor and there was a huge area of mold and damp in corners of the, you know, corners of the of the second floor. And it was obvious that there was some form of water ingress coming in through the roof. You know, put all these small things combined, you know, the roof, the tenant paying low rent, it needs a bit of TLC. All this, you know, puts people off. People want an easy life, they want, ha you know, hands off a passive way of investing. But th this property is certainly not that. Now, you know, this was, was actually pretty bad. And the tenant said that it's been like this for the past few years, four years and the, and the previous landlord hadn't fixed it right but I actually knew I've experienced similar things like this in the past I bought properties in a similar condition and I actually knew it would cost less than what a lot of people think to fix something like this and all it really is, is a slight trickle coming in a little little bit every single day over four years it looks absolutely horrendous if no one's addressed it right but actually all we need to do is close the gap on the inside bring it back to the brick and start again but it was only a you know a few square meters in terms of area so it wasn't that big of a job you know so again it put off a lot of people but I knew I could do that and get that job done very, very quickly and quite cheaply, to be fair. So, you know, all these three things combined allowed me to secure a really good deal in such a crazy competitive market at that time, right? Now, I put forward two offers. I'll, sh I'll I'll tell you what I actually did. So I put forward two offers to the vendor, uh, you know, straight away, literally after doing the property. I said, right, well, I can give you, um, you know, it, I can't remember the exact figure. Uh, I ended up buying it for 98,500, but I said, I can offer you 98,500 and I'll pay for all the works. You know, I, I can see you need some roofing work here. I'll pay for it. Or I'll give you 99 and a half thousand pounds, but I want you to sort out the roof. So I think they had some kind of um, guarantee or warranty with, with the structure of the roof, but they didn't want to get involved. You know, they didn't want the stress. They just wanted to get rid, you know, move on and, and get that peace of mind and get that clarity. And they accepted my lower offer of 98 thousand five hundred pounds and this was far below the asking price and far below the value of the property you know a two-bed property in that area you know in those times was around the hundred and twenty thousand pounds mark but there's other areas how I added value to the property which I'll come on to very shortly right so I completed on the property a few weeks later again I had a really good conversation with the tenants they were in the process of, of moving out they then moved out this gave me a great time to give the property a light refresh as I said before it needed a little bit of decorating and it also need the roof work addressing and the internals you know rectified and, and fixed so that gave me a great opportunity to, to do all that as well, right? So I did that, managed to relet the property at market value. And again, as I said before, the tenants the tenants were paying somewhere around 400 pounds per month. Now that property is getting 700 pounds per month. So you can see the huge increase in rent in that particular property, which then increases the value of the property itself, right? So not only did I get a tenant paying market rent into the property, but I also gave a slight refurb to the property to help increase its value as well. Now that property is valued at 145,000 pounds in today's terms, which is more than a 45% increase on what I actually purchased the property for. However, I'd argue that that property was worth more than what they sold it to me in the first instance. But again, because I put forward a credible offer, I was I completed in a very speedy manner. And you know, I've got an established portfolio. I've got an established reputation in that area. That all goes a long way. You know, would you rather have someone buy your property with certainty at a slightly lower price or take the risk with someone else who may pull out? You know, I think I know the answer. So how can you emulate this type of strategy? How can you get the success that, that I had on this particular deal? Well, I'm going to give you a few tips. First of all, look for properties where tenants are paying really poor rent, you know, below market value rent, because a lot of landlords are scared of this. And really all this is, is a paperwork exercise. Now, of course, you're not going to jack up the rent straight away to market value. It's not the right thing to do. It's not the fairest thing to do, right? But you need to communicate to them that, you know, they've been very lucky the past five years and the landlord hasn't increased those rents, you know, show them what the market value is and say, right, I'm not expecting this, but I do need a considerable increase if you want to stay in the property. I appreciate you've been paying rent on time for all these years, 
but it needs to be a win-win and you've got to come to a compromise, right? Now, other areas, if we take this one step further that I've already alluded to, you could have tenants in there that maybe they're not paying rent or maybe, you know, they're going through the, the, the court process to, for the eviction process. And again, this could be an area that you target because there's a lot of money to be made in this area. And, you know, you know, touch wood, I've never had to take a tenant through the court process to get a tenant evicted. You know, I've always managed to come up with some amicable agreement outside of court. And I've never had a tenant owe me more than 90 pounds. 90 pounds, can you believe that? You know, I couldn't, I couldn't even get the 90 pounds in the end, but you know, I thought, well, let's move on for the sake of 90 pounds, let's move on. So the, what I'm trying to say is there are ways of getting your rent in. You know, it's very rare that you actually end up going to court. And it's really important that you reference your tenants. Don't let anyone live in your property. Be really strict with your referencing. And you know, if you don't get a good feel, even if they pass a referencing, if you don't get a good feel, you're okay to say no, it's your property. And you know, only feel comfortable handing over the keys if you trust them. Okay, another reason why I managed to get this property is because of the scary maintenance issue, all this mold and damp in the roof. Again, don't let things like that put you off. They look a lot worse than what they actually are. When I look into a property now and I'm, if I go viewing property and the carpets are all shot and it needs painting, it just needs all that, you know, that is actually where your margin is made. So I actually learn to love that rather than hate that, you know? So for example, me and my wife were looking for a property at the moment and the one that we've just submitted an offer for today, our own personal home. Uh, but you know, it needs a bit of work doing to it. And my wife is struggling to, to see, you know, what it's going to look like going forward. And it's about telling what it could look like this. And then my wife came up with a really good idea on how we can extend one of the rooms that, that I, hadn't, I hadn't clocked onto. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is both parties can visualize this property in a different manner and put your, both your skill sets together. And you don't necessarily need property experience to visualize what it can look like. You can have transferable skills from other industries to know what a finished product could look like, right? Okay, the last tip I can give you to try and emulate some of the success is consider putting in a very timely offer, a very fast offer, what, how I did. And if it's on a Friday afternoon, even better. Because if you're serious, if you've got a good reputation or you've got cash in the bank and you've got proof of funds ready to go, all that adds up to, to the credibility of you and your offer and, and the boldness of your offer. And you're far more likely to being accepted than someone who's not credible, who doesn't have the funds ready and just submitting a low ball offer, right? So build up that reputation, being be known as that man or woman who is a person of their word and transact on property and complete on property in a timely manner. So I, I said at the beginning of this video that I'll um, touch upon how the asking price is normally not the value of the property. And this is absolutely key. So in this example, the asking price, is, in my opinion, was far below the value of that property, especially when you look at it at a price per square foot. So, you know, it needed a little work doing to it, don't get me wrong, but even so, it was a huge reduction in price per square foot compared to the comparables in that area, right? So do not take an asking price as face value. Do your own research, and I'll tell you a few ways, and, and I'll do a video about this, actually. It's on my, my to-do list. So have a look at similar properties that are sold nearby. Have a look at what they sold for price per square foot. You know, were they properties in great condition or did they need a full refurb? You need to take that into account. You know, again, you can just look at the sale prices. If either side of the property is the, is the exact same structure, you know, look at the sale prices. What, what are they like in comparison to the asking price on that particular property? And how many years has elapsed since that has actually happened? Well, you know, if it was 20 years ago, it doesn't really mean much. But if it was two months ago, of course, that's very, very current and it does mean a hell of a lot. So a bit of a long video today, a bit of a ramble, but I hope you've got value from today and I hope of, you know, through my confessions and honesty and, and my tips and tricks that you've learned something from today and, and you can utilize this in your day-to-day -day property strategy and, and tactics. So I'd really appreciate if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. It'll allow more people to see these videos and hopefully, you know, gain these tips and tricks also. And as, as you know, I'm running a special a special giveaway. Once we hit 10,000 subscribers, I'll be giving away uh, to one subscriber a complete random free flight. You'll be joining me in the cockpit. We'll be flying over Yorkshire together. So help me grow the channel and I'll help you by giving you a flight that you'll never forget. Flying in a, in a light aircraft is absolutely amazing. It's a massive passion of mine and I love to be able to share it with my friends and family. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy your day.